This is SpaceX's Starship in a belly-first freefall, flipping just seconds before it touches the ground. But why did SpaceX opt for such a dangerous landing? Why perform this impressive flip so close to the ground where there's no room for error? Prepare to be amazed. This is the insane engineering behind Starship's landing. In September of 2016, at the International Astronautical Congress in Mexico, Elon Musk, the founder and CEO of SpaceX, presented his ambitious plans to make the human species multiplanetary, with a total focus on the colonization of Mars. This marked the beginning of a gigantic and ambitious plan with the potential to transform humans into a multiplanetary species. The result of this effort is known today as Starship, a name attributed to the entire launch system that encompasses the main ship and the launch vehicle, called Super Heavy. For the first time in the history of rockets, a ship was entirely built from scratch with the objective of having the capacity to transport 100 or more people to Mars. In addition to a unique design, Starship would have four flight control surfaces, two on top and the other two on the bottom, for incredibly precise control during the entire phase of controlled freefall through the atmosphere, which could be either Earth's or Mars. Starship was placed on top of the first prototype of Super Heavy, for the first time, on August 6, 2021, becoming not only the tallest rocket, but also getting closer to becoming the largest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket surpassing the Saturn V, the until then largest and most powerful rocket ever made by humanity. But Starship has a unique, revolutionary, and for some people even scary landing maneuver, which is mostly done with the ship falling belly first. To make matters worse, the ship switches to vertical orientation only about 500 meters from the ground. To understand why SpaceX chose this revolutionary and insane landing procedure instead of opting to create the same type of landing that is done by Falcon 9, which has been and continues to be exhaustively proven for its reliability, we need to understand the dynamics of a vehicle arriving on another planet. When a vehicle is arriving on another planet, be it Earth or Mars, among several serious problems, it comes with one that is especially dangerous the tremendous excess speed, which usually hovers around 12,500 miles per hour. To begin to circumvent this problem, the team responsible for the ships chose to first place it in orbit to gradually reduce its speed and later, in a more controlled manner, carry out the entry procedure. But this can only be done if the vehicle or ship has fuel specially reserved for this procedure, which generally it does not have, in addition to being a more time-consuming procedure that greatly increases its complexity. That's why vehicles like rovers end up entering the atmosphere at such high speeds that they end up superheating and catching fire, which is why they need to have robust heat shields. In the case of space shuttles, because they have wings, they not only needed heat shields, but also had to enter with a strong angle of attack and perform a series of left and right turns as they fell through the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the incredible engineering and development production of Starship comes into action. Starship enters the atmosphere at an angle, just like space shuttles, superheating and continuously decelerating as the atmosphere becomes increasingly dense which is why it is covered by about 25,000 plates that form the heat shield. But instead of gliding like shuttles did, Starship maintains a belly-first free fall, which is controlled and can be adjusted precisely by its four flaps. About 500 meters from the ground, the three Raptor engines are turned on at maximum thrust, orienting the ship from a horizontal to a vertical position. Its rear flaps retract, further facilitating the execution of the landing maneuver. Retracting the rear flaps and keeping the front ones extended allows the rear of the ship to generate less drag, which induces the spin. But perhaps the most important question is why SpaceX chose this risky method and why they perform it so close to the ground. To answer these questions, we need to understand a concept on which the entire Starship landing procedure is based. 
terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is defined as the maximum speed reached by an object in freefall through a fluid, such as air. In other words, any body in freefall will reach a point where it will reach a maximum limit speed, from which point the body will stop accelerating and will maintain an almost constant speed. Once this point is reached, it is said that the body has reached its terminal velocity. A person, for example, has a terminal velocity of about 124 miles per hour, while a raindrop has a terminal velocity of about 12 miles per hour. The idea is to keep Starship at the lowest possible terminal velocity throughout the fall so that the ship's terminal velocity is so low that it isn't necessary to spend a lot of fuel to land safely. But let's see this in more detail. During Starship's fall, there are two main forces acting on the ship. The drag force, which acts upwards, slowing the ship down, and the force of gravity, which acts downwards, accelerating the ship. Starship reaches its terminal velocity when the drag force acting upwards equals the force of gravity acting downwards. Both forces end up canceling each other out, and Starship stops accelerating and starts to maintain an almost constant speed. As the ship continues to fall, its terminal velocity increases, but it is reduced more and more as the atmosphere becomes denser the closer it gets to the ground. But why does it fall belly first and not vertically? If we look at the area of Starship's belly versus the area of the bottom of Starship, it is evident that the belly has a larger cross-sectional area, generating much more drag than the cross-sectional area of the bottom of the ship. There are approximately 5,866 square feet of area against approximately 753 square feet of area at the bottom. In other words, there are seven to eight times more surface area colliding with air and generating much more drag, which consequently contributes to a much lower terminal velocity throughout the fall. And that's why the spin maneuver is done in the last moments, very close to the ground. But since Starship has flaps at the rear and front, things get much more interesting. With the management of the flaps, Starship can maneuver like no other spacecraft. By retracting both flaps on the right side, the ship can make a slight roll to the right, which results in a turn to the right. Similarly, by retracting both flaps on the left side, the ship can make a turn to the left. Basically, it is similar to the way airplanes turn, but without bending the wing, and with a much smaller and limited turning radius. By retracting the front flaps and keeping the rear ones extended, the nose goes down and, consequently, there is a small gain in horizontal speed. This means the ship can move forward, which can be useful when, for example, it is intended to escape from some danger zone for landing, or when the ship is slightly behind its ideal landing location. By retracting the rear flaps and keeping the front ones extended, it is possible to bring the ship back to its vertical orientation and by moving them asymmetrically, it is possible to make Starship spin, or in other words, make a yaw movement. With flap management, Starship can maneuver while it falls towards the landing site. As Starship has to turn on its engines in this horizontal orientation, some modifications had to be made to allow the engines to function in both positions. With the addition of so-called header tanks, which are auxiliary tanks fully filled with fuel, the main engines are fed fuel through them during the final ignition until landing. Starship basically spends all the fuel during ascent, and the little fuel that remains is in the lower parts of the tanks, which in addition to not being located in the ideal place, is in low concentrations, which could cause the engines to fail or not function correctly. The ignition of the engines needs to be done at the exact moment. The procedure is popularly known as suicide burn, which is defined as the moment to land a rocket smoothly with the time well calculated and with the ignition of the engines at high power started at the last possible second so that it reaches a vertical speed of zero. Precisely at the exact moment, it touches the surface of the ground and its engines are immediately turned off. Taking Falcon 9 as an example, which is certainly the rocket that has done the most suicide burns in history, if the engines are turned on too early, the rocket runs the risk of running out of fuel and ending up falling, damaging the engines and the landing legs. But it also runs the risk of reaching a speed of zero miles per hour while still in the air, which could make it start to rise again, which would be a big problem. If the engines are turned on too late, the rocket runs the risk of not being able to decelerate in time and ends up hitting the ground at high speed, destroying it, and probably the landing pad as well. 
That's why the suicide burn procedure is used, in which Falcon 9's computers calculate the time and the exact moment to turn on the engines so that it reaches zero altitude almost at the same time it reaches a speed of zero. Starship follows exactly the same principle. The main advantage of this whole procedure is that much less fuel is spent to bring the whole system to a stop and touchdown. Speaking of rocket engines in general, there is an ideal zone for their correct operation. In the case of Falcon 9, this range varies from 40% power to 100% power. Anything below 40% and the engine runs the serious risk of stalling or simply turning off. So the ideal configuration is around 70% power. This allows the computers to increase power if the ignition has happened later, or reduce power if the ignition has happened earlier. This is done completely autonomously by the computers, which are constantly calculating the speed, acceleration, and how much power is needed for the rocket to reach zero altitude, almost at the same time it reaches a vertical speed of zero miles per hour. A small curiosity about the final moments of Falcon 9's landing is that with just one Merlin engine at minimum power, it generates enough thrust to make the rocket hover in the air, demonstrating the true power of these engines and the importance of the suicide burn. The Starship landing maneuver is a concept that very well defines space exploration and rocket science, because it is made of risks. Keeping a ship in freefall belly first to only put it in the final position for landing a few meters from the ground on another planet is an extremely viable task in terms of cost reduction and from an engineering point of view, but also extremely dangerous because there are human factors involved. Although we have already successfully sent and landed several rovers and probes on Mars, making this almost routine and contributing tremendously to the expansion of our knowledge about other planets, the manned trip to Mars is much more challenging. A trip from Earth to Mars takes about seven months, and as has been exhaustively studied and proven on the International Space Station, the human body suffers a constant and significant loss of muscle and bone mass, as well as muscle atrophy at a much faster rate compared to those on Earth, precisely because of the absence of gravity. That's why astronauts are required to exercise for just over two hours a day to combat this loss. This means that inside Starship, there must be many machines for astronauts to exercise periodically. In addition to confinement, health issues, communication, and relations between crew members, the issue of sufficient food and water is also a critical point, since it takes seven months to go there and another seven months to return. So it is necessary to provide enough food and water for about two years of travel. But only time will tell how all these problems will be overcome. In the meantime, Starship will continue to be exhaustively tested and improved every day that passes. Perhaps one day this landing will be as common as the landing of the first stage of Falcon 9, but not on Earth. On Mars. If you enjoyed this type of content, consider becoming a channel member. Starting at only $2.99 a month, you can get early and ad-free video access, exclusive wallpapers, and a lot more benefits on higher categories. Choose the member category by clicking the join button below or via our Patreon. Thank you for watching.